yes so this is going to be uh, you know on your practice mcq that is a seriously you know very important subtopic for your ccr net yes everybody so shall we just have a detailed look on the series of your practice mcqs for your ccr net that's great come on so let us have a detailed look on the question and this is uh, your educator dr saranya right so if at all you have not yet subscribed to our channel don't you uh, know miss out to give a subscription such that you no know, you will get all the alerts and notifications also you no know, press your bell button such that you will get your notification yes fine so this is what you can do such that you no know, you will uh, get off more information from us right so that's great so that is all about this channel fine so coming back you know to our thing today yes so before that i'm glad to introduce myself i am dr saranya i have already completed my phd in biomaterials i do have 13 papers of good impact factor right and i am teaching for the past 10 years right and i have duly have cracked net you know with era 52 and also i have cracked tn set right okay everybody so let us begin our understanding today this is on a very first question on this emsa so what is this emsa emsa is nothing but your electrophoretic mobility shift assay okay so what you are going to study with this emsa why this emsa it is going to serve as a buzzword see this emsa is helpful to you know to have the study on the interaction between your dna and the protein right so what is your emsa doing it is helpful to show or study the interaction between your dna and protein so that is what it is doing right okay so what kind of interaction is taking place fine fine so here the the basic principle it is based very similar to that of your electrophoresis so based upon the molecular mass it is going to split off right so what are the two components number one it is going to be the dna right okay so the first component it is going to be the dna right and what is going to be the second component yeah so the second component you know it is going to be your protein okay so these two they are going to interact with each other and you know that is what uh, you have been seeing at up here right uh, so you know it is going to show an interaction between your uh, dna as well as the protein fine so if your dna is there alone it will be migrating to the bottom okay so whatever bands you see at the bottom it is going to represent your dna why your dna should go to the bottom see here you have loaded your sample here but what is the charge of your dna it is going to be negatively charged isn't it so it cannot stay with this positively charged electrode so what it is doing it is very forcibly moving down right this is only having a positive charge so all your dna is probably going down and it is occupying the down lane right but if you take up the proteins they do have different charge and you know depending upon the mass and the charge they are getting separated and they are localized here yes so i hope that this point is clear to you so in an emsa gel it is an electrophoretic mobility shift assay okay so whenever you are getting two bands what does it indicating yes so one band it is going to be meant for your dna yes so this one band is meant for the dna and what is the second band meant for yes so the second band it is going to be conveying about the protein that is interacting with your dna yes fine so this is a very important point right so the bottom line it is going to be your dna and apart from that if anything else is there that is none but going to be the protein that is actually interacting with your dna so with this knowledge you will just get into this particular question yeah so see this is going to be the very first lane right so this is the second lane this is going to be the third lane fourth fifth sixth and seventh okay so there are seven lanes in this experiment fine so let us begin with your first lane in this lane you have a dna 
agreed right but what about the protein have you put any protein see you have three proteins to be tested right and your a is going to be minus right your b is going to be minus also the c is going to be minus that means that you are not having any protein in this lane so that is why you didn't see any other extra band only your dna it is there apart from dna you didn't see any extra band why you didn't see any extra band because there is no other protein there yes everybody that's great so coming to the second lane in second lane you are going to add a b protein okay fine so this b protein if at all yes so this b protein if at all it is going to make an interaction okay fine so if this uh, no if this b protein yeah so if this uh, b protein is actually it is not making an uh, interaction with the dna okay so uh, no that is what it is happening right so what happens to your protein so it is not interacting that is why you didn't see any band over here right okay so that is what this is happening so if it is going to be a b protein it is not interacting here right okay fine so you didn't see any band here now it is going to be your c protein right so c protein is interacting with your dna no no bands here over coming to the fourth lane it is going to be this a protein okay fine so if you take off with this a protein this is showing a positive thing that means to this lane you have added this a protein okay fine so if you have added this a protein what could have happened is if the protein is interacting with your dna you could have uh, no yeah so uh, no you could have added up uh, this band okay fine yes and uh, then here you are seeing an extra band okay so this band is going to be your a protein right fine so this a protein is what it is going to bind with your dna yes so it is showing an interaction so you can definitely judge that your a protein is interacting with your dna yes so this is what you know you can conclude of uh, from uh, this fourth lane yes so what you are going to conclude yes so your a protein is going to interact with your dna that is why you are seeing a band right so coming to the next one yes so this is going to be on the fifth lane you are going to add the a protein and b protein right okay so if you are adding your a protein you are getting this band so for sure you can ascertain that this band is because of this a protein now we have got a new band so from where this band has come what else is new in this lane as compared to this a you have this b okay fine so this b is new so maybe this b has given a band here but you have to understand one more point if you put your b alone in the second lane you didn't see any band okay so keep this information in your mind right so coming to the sixth lane if you are going to add your b as well as the c okay fine so if you are going to add up with your b as well as c then what has happened see you didn't see any band here okay so if there is going to be no band with your b and c yes it indicates that your b and c are not interacting with your dna over now if you take the seventh lane you have your a and c only you see one band that too that is a a band right so c is not showing any sort of interaction so having this in mind now if you read out the option you will be able to crack this question yes everybody so shall we try it right so the protein a it is going to possess your dna binding motif true or false your protein a yes everybody so you see wherever your protein a is being added see this fourth lane yes and this fifth lane and this seventh lane right so wherever your uh, no protein a is added you see a band or not yes you are seeing a band wherever you are adding uh, no your uh, protein a you are seeing a band right so that implies that definitely your protein a is interacting with your dna that means your protein a is definitely going to have a dna binding motif yes everybody so this is going to be absolutely a correct statement right that's great 
come on so let us make a move towards the second statement your second statement says that your protein b is possessing a dna binding motif now come on check with this so where is your protein b yes maybe i will erase all these writings such that you know it will be easy for you yeah maybe just a moment i will erase this for you right right yeah fine i think now you can you know see it better right okay fine now you see as whenever you add your b protein b is here where else b is there here here and here yes so does this b protein does it has a dna binding domain if it is going to contain a dna binding domain up this is going to be your dna band why i told this is a dna band your dna it is going to be negatively charged so it has moved towards your positively charged so this is definitely a dna band so protein band is not seen here in this b lane isn't it so definitely your b is not possessing your dna binding motif this point has gone Yes, everybody. Right. So your protein B is not binding to your DNA. Right. So coming to the third point, you see, the protein B it is going to bind with your DNA A. I mean your uh, protein A that has already bound with the DNA. Which lane it is? See, this is going to be your A, right? And B. Yes. So if you take this lane, it is going to give you the information. so what is this option telling you your protein b it is actually binding to your dna protein a complex actually dna is there to that your protein a is binding to that a that has been bound with your dna now this b is binding right so this is what you know this option is going to say now check it see already protein a is bound now to this binding your b is added right so b is also showing a new band yes everybody i hope that now you are clear how this option is going to be correct yes fine so this protein b is not binding to the dna but it is going to bind with your dna protein a complex that is why when alone you are not seeing any band this is b positive isn't it so it is not showing any band if alone but if you are putting it alongside with your protein a then you are going to you know see of two bands that means it has bound only with the protein a so that is very clear very good so coming to the next point your protein c it is going to bind with your dna only when your protein a is bound right okay so what they are saying your protein c it is going to bind with your dna when it is already bound with a check it out when you add your c and a do you see an extra band this band is for a isn't it so do you see an extra band no you are not seeing any extra band here only this a protein band is there so obviously this is going to be a very wrong answer right so this correct answer is going to be your 1 and 3 that is your option b yes everybody so this question is clear to you it is a very important question and this is going to tell you about your electrophoretic mobility shift assay yes everyone so this is clear to you shall we make a move towards the next question if this is fine yes okay so that's great everyone come on so let us make a move towards the next question right so this question it is you uh, know from the statistics right okay so let us see bio statistics it is also a very important and you know it is a high yielding topic right okay so given below or the set of your statistical methods or parameters okay so this is going to be your column a and this is going to be your column b now you are going to match up between these two so what is a variance variance right okay and then your ha uh, correlation coefficient regression and chi square test right here what are the option it is the strength of association between the two variables 
right so this is a prediction of a dependent variable based upon the known value of the associated variable so this is the calculation of deviation between the observed and expected and this is going to be the spread of distribution yes so what is the variance variance is nothing but it is going to be the spread of distribution right so how a data is being spread so this is what is called as your variance it is explaining you about the spread of the distribution right okay so definitely a is going to be 4 right okay fine and then b so what is going to be the correlation coefficient whenever you say the coefficient it is between the ratio or it between the two things right so this is an association between the two variables so that is what it is called as the correlation coefficient right and the next one yeah it is going to be the regression analysis so regression it is actually based upon the dependent value and associate you have studied about y is equal to mx plus c yes so this is the equation for your linear regression okay so you already you have a dependent variable okay and you know that a known value of an associated variable it is there so c is the constant right so this is how you will be calculating your linear regression so definitely your regression it is the prediction value of a dependent variable based upon your known value right what is a chi-square test yes chi-square test is nothing but it is the difference between your observed as well as the expected value so this is what it is you know coming off to a chi-square test yes so obviously which is going to be the correct answer now come on yes a4 yes b1 c2 and d3 you got it four marks for this very simple question one and only if you know the definition this question is done see this is the variance it is how no your curve is getting a distribution okay right so in the center it is going to be this mean right so it will not have any such variation right yes uh, yes uh, yes indeed come on yes so it is not going to contain no any uh, this thing so this is going to be your central tendency you call it as the mean median and mode right okay so it will have a central tendency right and if you take the uh, variance or no your standard deviation it will be deviating away from the center so this is going to be 0 and this is going to be plus 1 plus 2 this is minus 1 and minus 2 so this is what you know how your data is varying from your central tendency you got it so this is what it is telling how it is going to vary off from your central tendency right so the difference between your variance and standard deviation is your standard deviation is nothing but it is the square root of your variance yes so now you got the relationship between uh, yes uh, indeed yeah everybody else come on so it is going to tell you the relationship between your variance and the standard deviation yes okay so how to calculate this variance for example you now you have five sample 100 50 no 50 30 20 okay first we have to calculate the mean for this okay fine so it is going to be 250 so 250 divided by 5 is Hmm, 50 isn't it so 50 is your mean right so what you will do you have to calculate x minus x bar so x is 100 so 100 minus 50 is 50 so the 50 the whole squared right so that is how you know it is going to come so this is going to be 50 and this is 50 minus 50 is 0 right and 50 minus 30 <coughs> yes 50 minus 30 is 20 and 20 minus 50 is 30 right fine so this is how you are going to calculate x minus x bar and then you have to put you know the whole squared right and then you have to put your sigma and then you have to divide it by n okay or n minus 1 right so this is how you are going to calculate the variance right what is this this is going to be your correlation so i told you about the correlation coefficient so this coefficient is telling you for example if you are going to increase your temperature 
okay so the activity of your enzyme okay you have to put it here yes so if you increase the temperature up to certain time the enzyme activity will rise okay fine so then it is showing a positive correlation but if at all your enzyme is suddenly going down you know if you raise your temperature yes you see how your enzyme activity it is there it is suddenly down it is going down then it is going to be a negative correlation between your enzyme and this thing so if there you don't see anything and everywhere the dot is there it is going to be a no correlation yes everybody so i guess that this is all clear to you right so this is a linear regression yes so what is the difference between your correlation and regression yes so in case of the regression always you have a constant that is being associated with right so regression is coming down but it is having a slope of m okay and this see it is nothing but your y intercept okay so this is your x axis this is your y axis and y it is going to be m into x plus c so this is a formula for your linear regression right and this is about your chi square test yes so this is also another important statistics so this chi square is coming under your non parametric method okay so what are all coming under your parametric see if you take statistics even you can find that in the last december 19 you get almost 10 mark from the statistics yes so you got two part c Hmm? and then no one more question so no that was also from uh, i mean three parts here totally because one more question that was partially an ecology question and that was also coming under your statistics yes fine so all these things are pretty important for your examination you have to study you know very very limited information you can you know really crack of the examination so coming back here i told you that you uh, know your parametric and non parametric method parametric method they always follow your sim symmetric data so your data is symmetric over the distribution but if you case of your non parametric method you have only the skewed data what do you mean by skewed see the data is skewed okay so it is not following a normal distribution but one side it is large and other side it is dragged so this is what it is called as the skewed data so all the skewed data is coming under your non parametric method yes everybody and fine so this is about our un academy plus classes yes so this plus classes are going on a high swing and you know many students are already enrolled and they are getting benefited by this course this course is you know so help so much of uh, helpfulness to the student because you know you will be getting you know a completion of your syllabus right so you don't need not run behind the books everything from the books it has been condensed and crushed and it has been given to you right so i am conducting two courses parallelly one it is on a complete course on life science so here i'll be completing nine major important units with this only you can crack up your net exam so apart from that parallelly by 7:30 pm i am running up a practice course on mcqs so this will give you, you know more idea on how to take up the questions so like how we are uh, doing it today so you'll be seeing all the mcqs so that is also unit wise so for example if you are done with this currently i uh, know last uh, this january month i was dealing with methods see method in methods unit a b unit 13 b 13 c 13 d everything is being covered in depth right so you need not worry on uh, your syllabus completion and uh, no, because what happens is the questions that have already come it will never repeat okay fine only 20% will be a previous year question 80% it is going to be the new question so you should get ready only for this 80% of the unasked question so that is why i am dealing with the complete syllabus i am not taking up only the important topics but i am dealing in depth of your complete syllabus such that even if it is coming from a new portion you will be able to answer that question yes fine so that is for the last month and this month i uh, know uh, this is i uh, know your last month i am i am done with two units right so one was on your methods and then i started with your cell biology this month i am beginning with your uh, applied biology apart from that you know i am dealing the total thing from your molecular interaction seriously i'll tell you leninger is such an important book uh, yes yes oh definitely oh yes 
botany or oh, definitely ashwini verma yes uh, definitely no for botany also no definitely you have your uh, you have to take up a very important set of units right so minimum i tell you that i'll suggest you that for preparing your csr net a minimum you have to learn up with nine units okay since because you are botany definitely you can do it up with your plant physiology yes you can do it up with developmental biology yes so you can do it with ecology yeah evolution you can do it yes fine so likewise you can select you know a uh, very important units apart from that there are certain evergreen units like your ecology evolution apart from that must study is your molecular biology as well as you know your cell biology so these are all the non skippable units right methods yes if you are doing plant physiology maybe little bit you can give off with the methods but definitely methods is also a very important paper right so you can balance off and you can prepare with nine unit strategy because if you are preparing with a nine unit only you will be able to attend your part b yes this is highly serious so till last year we have been suggesting the students yes yes oh definitely yes yes so uh, no as far as you are uh, till uh, no some two years back i will suggest the students to do only five unit studies okay so it was sufficient till last two years back but since i uh, know your 2018 and 19 paper if you analyze definitely you need to take up all the nine units right so this month you uh, know i am dealing with your molecular interaction that is your biochemistry so the full paper will be dealt off with apart from that if at all you know you are taking any other examination maybe like icmr or gate or bar exam is coming off so you want to enroll now but yet you know you want to back here the lectures that is already completed for your december 19 batch you can do it okay so you can take the already completed weekly quiz you can have the complete access so that is why we call it as an unlimited access okay so you get the access not only to the current courses yes fine so you will be also getting yeah rituraj yes so you will be also getting the total back end classes okay so already completed courses in your december 19 you will have the access so you can take that mock test you can take that week quiz you can see the recorded version you can download the pdf note so any exam you can uh, seriously you know attempt with our notes yes so that is the advantage of this you can see the series of already completed courses yes if you want now to study that definitely you can do it up right so this is going to be the course and fee structure for the 6 months package it is going to get you know 8400 but you know you can get a 10% off by using this code serenya live okay so you can use only one code at a time maybe if you use my code also no it is going to be the same 10% Yes, so the code is Saranya Life. If you use this code, you will get a ten percent off. So the total uh, after discount, the price will be seven thousand five hundred and sixty. Right. So if you want to go for a one year package, because you know, for example, you no, know, you you are aiming to prepare or write up with both your June twenty and December twenty. Then you can go probably for a one year package. So your one year package is post discount. It is going to charge you only nine thousand four fifty. So approximately, if you calculate, so it is a one time payment. But I am telling you that approximately only eight fifty you are uh, provides. I mean you are uh, spending per month. Okay. So you will have live access to all these courses. You can clarify your doubts instantaneously. You will get a very good study material by means of your PDF. You good. You get a very good weekly quiz, monthly quiz, unit wise quiz, mock test. Yes. So everything you will be getting at this subsidized price. Since because our institute is you know little bit new into this field, maybe it is you know available now at this discounted rate. Maybe you know this offer may not run for a long time. Yeah, hey everybody. So I think that this is all clear to you. Maybe we will go back to our questions. Yes. Okay. Come on, everybody. So uh, no doubts on this, I guess. So we will make a move into the next questions. Yes, Ashwini. Yes, Rituraj. Yes, Inder. I think all your doubts are uh, done as far as how our courses are beginning. Yes. See, Rituraj, this CSER net. If you crack your JRF. 
okay seriously i'll tell you this is how we are doing our phd see i, I you will be getting a scholarship of 40000 rupees okay so once you crack your jrf you are eligible to get admitted into a phd so you can do your phd in a college also you can do a phd in a university also you can do your phd at any institute like iit iisc right so and you have your iiscs you have your no ccmbs all the good institutes you can enroll for the phd after you crack your jrf only okay so this is a very important exam right so said seriously after this you uh, know you will be getting a stipend along with that you will be registering for a phd what else you want yes hmm yeah exactly a uh, krishna and vindu so this is something like 31000 alongside with your hra that is 30% okay fine so if you are you are living in a a tier city you will be getting a 30% hra right fine so that is what yeah yes yes krishnandu definitely you will get in uh, kolkata definitely so no all the a tier cities like so the, you will be getting 30% right yes yes definitely krishnandu so this is the beauty of this exam so that is why bunch and bunch of students are rushing for this to get good aar such that you will get a good you uh, know placement in in a good research institute Yes so seriously this exam is going to make a transformation in your life so take it up seriously i have students who are preparing right from their msc first sem yes now you got the seriousness of the exam isn't it so you you see that someone is preparing for the two years for a single exam how much input could have they put yes so already you know students are preparing you know i have i have batch of students who are doing or preparing for their iit jam along with that they are studying with their csr net okay so these students are there in their only year bsc third year okay so you can see so that much of uh, input is being put by the student yes yes so that much of input is being put by students right away from that bsc third year okay yes so definitely you know you should plan ahead such that you can survive over the competition yes everybody so that's great come on so let us have a look uh, no detailed look into the next question so this question is from your developmental biology so this is also another important sub topic right so the injection of your noggin mrna in the cells that will become the future ventral side of a frog embryo it is going to mimic the effect of organizer to the ventral side okay right so this experiment is demonstrating that what it is demonstrating you are noggin it is a transcription factor or it is going to induce your ventral fate or it is involved in an organizer fate or it is required to induce a secondary axis right so see here yes so you if you inject your noggin mrna okay so into the cell that are destined to become the ventral side yes it is going to change or it is going to get converted into an organizer so if you the moment you hear about the term organizer you understand that is representing your dorsal side right so this ventral side is now becoming a dorsal side okay so definitely this is not inducing a ventral fit so you can eliminate your b option so wherever b is there you can eliminate it right so you have a doubt between your a and c and c and d right now coming back here okay so your noggin it is going to be a protein and it is nowhere stated that it is a transcription factor so this is also gone right so your a is gone so the correct answer is c and d still we will see what is the c c is involved in the organizer so this is true statement what about d if it is an organizer definitely it will induce a secondary axis that is so obvious right so the correct answer is going to be your c and d you can see this pic here you can 
can see a list of your molecules right so you are noggin cordin polystatin yes cerebrus these are all you know a list of very very important protein so that is helpful for dorsalizing an embryo okay fine so if you take this ventralizers it is only going to include your bmp right so this bmp is what it is coming coming under your ventralizer and all the molecules they are bmp antagonistic if it is going to be bmt antagonistic yes manish yes manish come on so if it is going to be a bmp antagonistic that is going to be a dorsal one right okay so this is going to be your ventral one that is your bmp Yes, everybody. So this part is now clear to you. So what is dorsal? What is ventral? Right. So now you are noggin is not a ventral fate. So noggin is definitely no. It is going to be your dorsal fate. So that is what it is. In, you know, it is present. Your noggin is acting like your organizer. So already, you know, in your uh, Gilbert. So the best book for your developmental biology. It is going to be, you know, a Gilbert book. Yes. So your Gilbert. It is the best source of book for your uh, developmental biology. Right. So here they have could have already given in your text stating that. Ah uh, yes, yes. Ah uh, yes, Manish. Yes. Which is best for your MSc? Yes. Hmm. See, all these institutes are pretty good nowadays. As far as your PhD is considered, right? Th there are many factors. Okay. So uh, the best thing we cannot categorize based upon the institute, but you no, know, it is based upon the topic of research that you are doing. Okay. So because if at all you have a very good topic, okay. So that topic you can do it anywhere. Okay. So let it be your IIT or Delhi University or else GBHU or else JNU. all or equivalently good okay so definitely that depends upon your area of interest okay fine so no if at all your area of interest it is merging with you uh, know your upcoming supervisor probably no you can choose that particular institute right because this is going to be your life for the next 5 years or 4 years right so maybe you know now you can do it for 3 years i guess but you know uh, obviously you will you will take you know a maximum time of 5 years even i took 5 years for completion of my phd so it should all depend upon your area of interest fine so what you can do is that yeah see uh, yes rituraj what subject should i choose yeah yeah see as far as your uh, csr is considered no uh, you uh, as because you said you are from zoology definitely no you must choose of with your animal physiology yes and then you know you can choose if at all you are little bit thorough with biodiversity you can choose that diversity and then you must do with the developmental biology yes ecology yes evolution right and then you know definitely you should do some basics on your molecular biology cell biology yes and then you know if possible do it on methods because that will be helpful for your phd yes so definitely you should choose with the methods right so maybe you know one more unit you can add it up on your biochemistry yes so this will be a winning combination for your preparation yes rituraj yes manish tayal so now your doubt is done yes so that is all you know depend upon your area of interest all the institutes are pretty good and you know yes so depending upon your area of interest you can definitely select the institute right and one more thing that supervisor have to you know it, it will be passing through your phd admission process okay so in that also you should you uh, know you can select with you uh, know your topic of interest you will be getting that yeah manish i think your question is addressed yeah rituraj i think us is also addressed right fine everybody so coming back here to our question i told you about you know this injection of your noggin mrna so the moment you are injecting your noggin mrna see even though if you were uh, yes yeah right so even though if your egg it is being uv irradiated so this is a very important experiment right so if the egg is uv irradiated all the cells could have been damaged right but now you are going to inject your noggin mrna the moment you inject the noggin mrna the exact site okay so this exact site it is it is no 
Uh, yeah. So on this exact side, it is it is uh, no going to be get off. Okay. So this UV radiation. Okay. So uh, this UV radiation it will be totally off. Right. Okay. So this UV radiation it it will not actually you no know, have any influence. This noggin mRNA it is going to overcome the effect of your UV radiation and it is going to make a total you no know, rejuvenation. Okay. So it is going to make a total rejuvenation of this thing yes everybody so this part is now clear to you yes so that is going to make of a total rejuvenation of this thing yes so that is what you know it is that is the power of your anogen mrna right so your noggin mrna it is going to be localized in this dorsal blastopore lip region so this is going to become expressed in the notochord right and then this rescue of this dorsal structures may be done by your noggin protein and you know your xenopus even though they are exposed to this uv you know it is it is going to rejuvenate them right fine Yes, so that is what it is going to take place. So definitely your option C and D it is going to be ultimately correct with this. Yes, everybody. So we will make a move towards the next question. Right. So your next question, it says that in an E. coli that has been grown under the nutrient rich condition, the replication of your entire genome, it takes place about for 40 minutes. Okay. Right. But it is dividing every 20 minutes. Why it is so? Actually, you know, it should take 40 minutes. But uh, why it is dividing every 20 minutes? Yes. So, I will read out the option. The first one says that your E. coli, it is going to divide every 20 minutes. That is equal transfer of your genetic material. It occurs only in this alternate round of your cell division. Right? Okay. So, the second one says that the second round of your genome replication, it will begin, you know, before the completion of the first round of replication. By the time the cell is ready to do, thereby you get two copies or your genome replication and cell division, it is going to be, you know, not coordinated with each other. Maybe, you know, that is the reason why this is taking place or, you no, know, only one strand, you know, it is achieved within 20 minutes. Yes, everybody. So, do you think which is going to be the correct answer for this question? Yes. Hmm. So, the correct answer is, see here, your second round of replication, it is going to begin before the completion of the first round. Yes. Hmm. No. See here. So, the correct answer, yeah, in there. Come on. Very good try. So, the correct answer is going to be your option B. See what has happened. Yeah, Rituraj. What has happened? You have a bidirectional mode of replication. Okay. So, see if this is going to be the circle. One way this is going here. The other way this is going there. Okay. Fine. So, one more thing it is going to happen. What is that? So, your second round of replication, it is going to begin off before your first round is doing. It is something like if two men are doing a work. Okay. So, it will take only five minutes. Right. Fine. If only one man is doing the work, it will take ten minutes. How come? How this is halfly reduced? Because two men are doing the same work, isn't it? So likewise, even before the first fellow is completing the replication, the second fellow commences. So they both together, they are able to achieve it in half the time. Yes, everybody? So now I guess this question is now thorough to you. Yes? Okay, and one more information. Uh, no, today uh, in our uh, UN Academy platform uh, at your 9:30. Okay, so your 9:30 p.m. So you can log, you can create a sign in in our UN Academy platform. Yes, and you can you know try with a free special class. Okay, so this will uh, give you an experience of what is a plus class and you know what we are literally doing up in our classes. So like uh, your YouTube, you can create a login in our UN Academy under that CSER net category. You can select my name. Yes. So here you, I am conducting a class at 9.30 p.m. tonight. Yes. So I am doing it on the total concepts of your replication. Okay, so there you will be uh, having the access to attend the quiz also. So you will get an idea of what is that special class and what is our plus classes. 
yes so please do experience this such that you will get a lot of information on this replication yes everybody so shall we make a move towards the next question that's great come on so this mero diploid strain of e coli with the genotype yes o c z minus y plus by o plus y plus and z plus it was constructed fine so what is going to be this symbols first what is the mero diploid yes what do you mean by this mero diploid mero diploid means it is going to contain the genes from the chromosome as well as the plasmid oh yes okay yeah ritu come on so no your mero diploid it is going to contain no your chromosomal genes as well as the plasmid genes right okay so that is what it is called as your mero diploid it will contain both the th i mean your gene it will be present in the chromosome also in the plasmid also right so you can think of your bacteria so the same gene of lac is present in the plasmid as well as this chromosome very good so this is what it is called as the mero diploid now you take the first point is oc what is this o o means it is the operator okay so what is o o is nothing else but it is going to be the operator okay right so this is going this is this is the place where your repressor will come and bind okay so if you take your lac operon you will know that initially there will be a promoter okay right so promoter who is going to come and bind yes so your promoter it is the site where your hmm rna polymerase will come and bind okay so your promoter it is the region where your rna polymerase is going to come and bind after the promoter you are going to have your operator okay fine so what is an operator it is the region where the repressor will come and bind so what is the repressor he is going to inhibit you know the total synthesis so that is the repressor okay yes so this repressor this is going to block the way for the rna polymerase right so it will not allow your rna polymerase to pass through right next now it will be containing the different gene like z y and a okay fine now if at all the lactose is present in the medium what will happen this lactose will bind with the repressor okay so your repressor it is going to be a tetramer right so what is the repressor it is a tetramer tetramer means it will have four parts isn't it right now to this one part if this uh, inducer is binding the other part it is leaving the operator okay so this repressor and inducer will leave this operator free if this operator is now free your polymerase can pass through this so your gene will be on yes so this is the total concept this is why your lac operon it is called as your inducible operon okay fine so your lac operon it is called as your inducible operon so why it is called as your inducible operon because if lactose is on your repressor will come out okay so if lactose is not there the repressor will be bound so always your gene will be off you got it right so now what is this oc oc means there is a constitutive operator that means this operator cannot bind with the repressor so repressor is the inhibitor now if you not binding with the repressor always your rna polymerase is free to move so always your gene is on right but see this is g minus that means no gene is there even if your operator is not inhibiting also your gene is not there right so there won't be any production gone so you have to consider only this so if your lactose is there your gene will be on if the lactose is not there your gene will be off right so now if there is no induction what will happen yes everybody come on so if there is going to be no induction what is going to happen yeah everybody come on so if there is no induction what will happen so your gene will be on or not see 
so this is going to be your promoter right so to this promoter your rna pole has bound right so it is ready to move this is your operator to that your represser has bound okay so if you have put your inducer only represser will move now this rna polymerase can it move this is being repressed by the represser so if there is no induction no production should be there but anyhow you have to understand one point that always there will be a leaky production okay yes so it doesn't mean that if you don't have uh, you know the induction it should be zero never any gene will become zero there will be always a basal level of expression right so what is this this is called as your basal level of expression right so what is this basal level of expression how it is doing off so this is turning to be zero right so this cannot come so either of these two if there is no induction it cannot be at the maximum so the correct answer is going to be the c so let us check with each and every option right so see if there is going to be no induction yes the level will be very less but if you induce with the iptg so what is the importance with your iptg it is going to be your great ts in inducer okay but remember that this is not a substrate but it can induce the production okay so this has switched on the gene that's what we need okay so if you put your iptg it is going to switch on the gene if you put lactose always no uh, glitters are gl better than the gold isn't it right so it will have uh, no less production as compared to iptg right so coming to the third one induction sorry fourth one induction with n moles of lactose in the presence of glucose okay so if at all you give a bacteria with glucose or lactose it is going to select only glucose why this bacteria has to act on the lactose and convert it into glucose and galactose so will it choose it never it will want only the ready made form yes so it will go only for the glucose and one more point this glucose is going to serve as a catabolite represser so it will not on you know your lactose operon gene so always that level will be less right for this reason the correct answer for this question it is going to be your answer c right so that is what no it is the correct answer for this particular question yes everybody so i hope that this is all fine to you so shall we make a move towards the next question yes everybody come on so this is another question you can see the stereotype of question may not be on the same thing but a similar question is being asked every time either from your tripoporon or from this lacoporon this is a favorite topic of your cgr net right yeah ritu come on so in a strain of your e coli a fusion was made between this lac and the strip okay fine so before going into this i would like uh, to remind you gently about you uh, know these uh, these uh, things okay so what about your lac operon see here your lac operon you call it as an inducible operon okay so what do you mean by an inducible operon if you add a lactose yes your gene will be on right this is what it is about your lac operon but if you take your trip operon yes this is a repressible operon why repressible if tryptophan is already present in the medium your bacteria need not break its head to synthesize again your tryptophan you got the difference right so this is why it is called as the repressible operon okay so if already tryptophan is present it will not again break the head to synthesize so what it happens your tryptophan it is acting as a co represser okay so what it will do it will go and bind with your actual represser and it is going to serve as a main inhibitor for you know for your synthesis so this is what it happens like a feedback inhibition okay so this is the concept behind your tryptophan and this lac operon right so i hope that now it is all clear to you now coming back to our question 
fused your lac i remember i is representing the represor okay so your lac operator and promoter is there now you have fused them with the tryptophan gene right so see the first option tryptophan it will be synthesized in a medium that is containing lactose and tryptophan true or false yes tryptophan it will be synthesized in a medium so that is containing your lactose and tryptophan true or false hmm yes hmm in general if your tryptophan is kept under your trip operator right maybe this will act as a represor and inhibit but now it is kept under the lac operator so will the lac operator repress the because of the tryptophan presence never okay so your tryptophan will be synthesized in a media so that is going to contain you know your lactose as well as the tryptophan right next one the tryptophan synthesis so this is a correct statement right so the tryptophan synthesis it will be repressed in a medium containing glucose Yes why i told that your glucose is going to serve as a catabolite repressor for your lac yes who is the driver now lac is the driver so if lac is uh, no if glucose is present will the lac on the gene no because it is going to repress right so this will not on your tryptophan biosynthesis right this is something like you have a mathematics teacher in your class okay so you are be belonging to this biology but the teacher knows only maths so what will the poor teacher do he will teach only mathematics because he is knowing only maths likewise here this operator and this repressor only lack okay so they will behave like a lack repressor and lack operator only so they will not behave like your trip one yes so now this is clear to you so definitely yes yes or it raj why so this is a very important topic okay right so the next one your tryptophan synthesis will take place in the absence of sufficient tryptophan no why because i told you that this is going to be a mathematics teacher he will know only max he will not do any biology okay yes so the correct answer is going to be only your option 1 and 2 yes okay that's great fine so one final question for the day we will finish the class off right now you are going to match it up you know between the two important things of your trna structure right yes so shall we see this question it is another important question trna structure right fine what is an acceptor arm <laughs> oh yes rituraj yes yes hmm yeah yeah that's right so that is why you know your trip operon is also little bit confused right fine so these are all poor biology students and they cannot take it up max right yeah but the max teacher will teach only max right absolutely so that what that is what it is taking place with the fusion between you know your lac operon as well as your trip right so i hope that now you understood this yes you will not forget this fusion i guess right okay so coming back here so to your acceptor arm so what is going to be your acceptor arm yes so you are you know your acceptor arm it is going to contain no yes so your acceptor arm is going to contain your cca sequence yes so that is what no it is the structure yes so your acceptor on it is going to contain your cca structure right okay so what is your anticodon arm yes so your anticodon arm will contain your five base pair of stem sequence right so that is your anticodon arm so that will contain your five base pair of stem and what is going to be your t size c arm yes so your t size c arm it is going to contain your pseudo uridine this this psi is going to be your pseudo uridine right t is your i mean c is your cytosine and this psi it is going to be your yeah very good so the correct answer is your option d and what is this d arm it is going to contain your dihydrouridine yes so that is going to be a modified base so that is why you know you just called as your d loop this is called as your 
T psi C loop. Okay, and this is going to be your 3 prime end and it is going to be your 5 prime end. Yes, everybody. So I guess that this is all clear to you. Maybe we will have a couple of questions. Maybe, you know, you will just take it up this question for the next class. Yes. Okay, everybody. So that's great to have all of you on board today. So very happy for you all. So kindly subscribe our channel and also, you know, you can take up the free classes. Okay. So you need not pay anything like how you are attending here. You can attend for the free classes that are called as the special classes. Okay. In our UN Academy flat form so maybe you can create a simple login no nothing no fees for that yes oh yes Rituraj so next class you know probably we will be having uh, in the next month of Feb so very shortly I will share you the uh, thing on this thing so maybe till that you can download our UN Academy app and know that is also a free wear so in that also you can start following many of my free courses yes so you can use that till you are enrolling you know for our plus class right okay so in that app only i will be communicating with you you can ask doubts yes anything you can do it up with the app yes inder yes rituraj yes everybody oh yes no no this is not last class next month you know we'll be planning classes very shortly right okay yes ritu yes everybody yeah inder yes uh, uh, manish yes everybody so that's great on board ashwini Right. Okay, everybody. So, all the best. I will catch you up in another interesting class. So, think of taking up the plus classes. So, that will be the full-fledged classes. Right. Okay. So, that's great. So, use this code for 10% off. And you now you can try to sign yourself with your an academy and attend the special classes till you begin your live course. Yeah, everybody. Bye-bye. All the best. Take care. See you soon.